The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Prayer is something we all need. Prayer is something that must be a part of our lives as Christians. We underestimate the power of prayer too often. All the great men of God that we see in the Bible were men of prayer. Prayer is the heartbeat of every child of God. I am sure you've heard this before. A Christian that does not pray is a weak Christian. A Christian that does not pray is an exposed Christian. A Christian that does not pray is a vulnerable Christian. The unfortunate thing is we do not take prayer as seriously as we ought to. If we think we truly understand how dangerous this world is, we would pray more. I think if we understood that the Christian life is not a playground, but a ground, we would understand. I think if we truly understood the forces in which we wrestle against, we would pray more. I think if we understood the number of demons, evil spirits, and people of wickedness that want to destroy our lives, as a Christian, we would pray more. I think if we understood the number of arrows that are being fired at us day and night, we would pray more. The Bible tells us that there is a real devil. I don't believe in this make-believe devil people are trying to teach about, saying that he is a construct of evil. No, I am a Bible believer. And my Bible tells me clearly that there is a real devil who is motivated and energized. Kill, steal, and destroy. And he goes about looking for whom he can devour. He doesn't get tired when it comes to attacking the children of God. The devil doesn't get tired when it comes to ending the lives of great people. Do you think the devil will leave you and not come back after you? Look, don't let anyone deceive you. If you are not praying hard in this life, you are already living an exposed life. We Christians have relegated prayer so much. We pray for five minutes and we get tired. We pray for a few minutes and then we are already asleep. When it is time to watch a TV series, you can be up all night to watch it. But when it comes to prayer, two minutes into it and you are asleep. Tell me, is this natural? The devil will do everything he can to ensure that you do not have a prayer life. I have been a Christian for many, many years, and what I have found is that there is nothing that the devil fights more in your life than your prayer life. My friend, you are letting your guard down. This is the time for you to wake up. This is the time for you to open your eyes and stand. The Bible says in Isaiah 60, 1-2 KJV, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. There is a darkness in the world. The devil has engulfed this world with darkness. But glory be to God, that is glory shining on us. You must rise now and strengthen your spirit. Prayer is not what you should forget in your life. I want to tell you that you can be a prayerful person and still live a weak Christian life. You may ask me how it is possible for a Christian to be prayerful Christian and still be a weak Christian. It is a very real phenomenon. A prayerful Christian who is still weak. Yes, the Bible says the prayer of the righteous will do great things, but I will not lie to you that there are things that can stop the prayer of the righteous from getting an answer. I will not lie to you that you can pray for many days and get nowhere. Yes, it can be frustrating to know that your prayers are not being answered. God wants you to pray to him. He wants you to hear your voice, but the truth is that the flesh can stop him from hearing you. It would be a mistake to pray in the flesh. It would be a mistake to pray by the leading of the flesh. You can be a prayerful person, but the flesh can be what is leading you. I will not lie to you that the flesh will make you pray some prayers that will not go above the roof. I will give you an example of one of the things praying in the flesh will make you do. James 4.3 KJV Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. The flesh will make you pray amiss. The flesh will make you lust and then pray that your lust is fulfilled. Look, God is not a lust-fulfilling God. The flesh will get you praying according to your lusts. Philippians 4.9 states, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The verse says God shall supply all your needs, not all your lusts. If you are praying based on lust, God cannot listen to that. God is not a lust enabler. God does not sponsor lust. He will not answer you. The flesh is one of the things that can hinder your prayers from being answered. This shouldn't even be a surprise to any of us because we should know already the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are the 17 things that will hinder your prayers. Galatians 5, 19, 21 KJV. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. 
which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I will tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All these things are the works of the flesh. They are sins. There are no other words to describe them but sin. They are sins. When you are being led by the flesh, you are sinful. I'm trying to explain how the flesh will hinder your prayers. Isaiah 59, one through two KJV. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. When you allow the flesh to lead you, you will fulfill the desires of the flesh. Flesh cannot lead you to be a holy person. The flesh cannot lead you to have love. The flesh cannot lead you to have self-control. The flesh cannot lead you to have peace. The flesh cannot lead you to have any of the fruits of the Spirit. The flesh leads you into sin only and nothing else. When you are in sin, you will go far away from God. You cannot be in sin and think you will be one with God. God is not a God of sin. He cannot even look at sin. God cannot look at the appearance of sin. The eyes of God are too pure to look at sin. Habakkuk 1.13 KJV Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? Another way to make sure the flesh is not blocking your prayers is to make sure that you pray in the Spirit at all times. Ephesians 6.18 KJV Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You cannot approach God in the flesh. It is not possible to do that. John 4.24 KJV God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and truth. You must pray to God in the spirit. Make sure the flesh is not the one that is controlling you. When you are praying in the spirit, it means that you are allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in prayer. If the Holy Spirit is leading you in prayer, you will not be praying based on lust. Romans 8.26 KJV Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit will lead us in prayers. Not only do we have to pray in the Spirit, we must also walk in the Spirit. When we walk in the Spirit, we are telling the flesh that we are no longer under its control. We must walk in the Spirit at all times. Walking in the Spirit means allowing the Holy Spirit to direct your life. This world is not a place where you can survive on your own. When you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and you obediently follow, the 17 things I listed early will not be able to hinder your prayers. The Bible says we must walk in the Spirit and we will never gratify the desires of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 through 18 KJV. This I say when, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. If you've been walking in the flesh, your prayers will not go above the roof. If you have been allowing the flesh to lead you, you're wasting your time. This is what you should know before now. There is one thing you should do if you are like this. First of all, go to Jesus. You need to run to Christ and allow him to use his blood to wipe your sins away. You need to allow Jesus to give you a new robe. You need to go to God through Christ. If you want God to look at your prayers, if you want him to listen to your prayers, you must allow Jesus to wash you clean. You must wash clean in the blood of the lamb, the blood that was shed to take your sins away. You must wash clean in that blood. When you have done that, you will then go to God through Christ. 2 Chronicles 7.14 KJV If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God is ready to listen to you if you can allow the Holy Spirit to lead you.
also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.